My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're doing what everyone has been asking for, the MMX 500. So let's do this puppy. Um, the reason why I was reluctant, and people kept saying, are you going to do it, are you going to do it, are you going to do it, are you going to do it? The reason why I was a bit reluctant to do it is because it's, it's a race machine, it's a race bike. You know, we can talk about um, race technology and stuff, but people are ranting on... Uh, or people, you know, get right hyped up about it. Especially when we've been talking about... I'll have to move this stool again. People have been talking about four, uh, two strokes. You know, we, we, in this channel, we chat about four strokes and two strokes and stuff like that. And then people get all wound up about me saying, you know, the volumetric efficiency is not very good. And so on, and so on, and so on. And then people always come back to this and they say, yeah, but what about this? Well, if you're going to say that, it's like, yeah, well, what about the MotoGP? 1,000cc bikes, we don't use them to compare that to, you know, when I'm talking about other engines and stuff like the Evinrude or the, you know, the uh, Rotax engines or what have you, I'm comparing it to, um, you know, sports bikes, super bikes and stuff like that, but they are road going indicators, foot pegs, you know what I mean, and side stand fucking switches, you know, they, they are something versus something that's available to the public, but, but you know, you, you want it, so let's do it. So it's a 576cc, that's what I've got written down here. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm just reading off a sheet that's not bullshit here. I've never seen this fucking thing, you know, they're only going to make 99 or something or whatever. It's just like, but anyway, yeah. So it's what, it's 576cc, uh, uh, it's slightly over square, um, under square, sorry. So it's a 56mm bore times 58, what's that say, 58.5. So it's a, uh, a slightly under square bore, uh, and they reckon they're getting um, 195 horsepower. Now, when I did look through all the information that I could find and all the rest of it, um, it did say, or from this blurb I've got, they said they've got 190 at, at horsepower at um, 13k RPM. But the strange thing was is that it was actually measured at the output shaft. So you've got your losses there. But um, this is just what whatever this fucking article was that was written on it. They said that it was measured at the output shaft, not the rear wheel, which I just thought was, I don't know, a bit strange. Maybe they were trying to get the highest numbers, not measure at the crank. You know, don't get me wrong. If you measure through the actual entire engine and then pick it up, you pick your measurement up at the output shaft, you are still going to record your losses, um, you know, your... Uh, transmission losses and all the rest of it you know you're still going to have that however the chain and then the rear wheel and the friction and so on that will reduce it a bit more you know chains are generally uh, just a ballpark figure they're about 98 percent efficient it goes from 98 to about uh, 95 to about 98 so in between there so i always just think 95 always think the lowest and then if you get more power we're all good um so it says it also has a double flap electronic con controlled uh, exhaust valve, which I imagine, I haven't seen any pictures of it, but I imagine it's kind of like a, a guillotine, or it could be literally some kind of rotating flap or something like that. It's basically a power valve. Um, but the engine itself is pretty much based on the um, GP, where's the fucking rubber? It's pretty much based on the MotoGP bikes of the 1970s and 80s and what have you. And the 90s where pretty much it's two crankshafts um, driven to get you know basically they drive a, a common shaft which is generally your input shaft for your gearbox the difference between this and the RD500 is that the pistons are actually um, at 90 degrees so this is a 90 degree V4 the V4 I've said before I'm a bit funny about but, you know, so be it. If that's one that, what they want to call it, that's what they want to call it. It's their bike at the end of the day. So, um, I'm not going to wang on about how much power it makes and all the power factors. Of course it makes stupid power. You know, I can't remember what it says in here somewhere. But I did, yeah, 127 kilos and 195 horsepower. That's more than a horsepower per kilo. That's just stupid numbers. You know what I mean? So, and they reckon it's got a top speed of over... Uh, 192 miles per hour they'll probably go over over that but um, yeah so let's just look at the mechanical side of it 
Uh, it is a 90 degree, and like I said with the RD500, uh, the only reason why they went for stupid angles like 50 or whatever is basically because they just wanted to fit everything in. It was all about um, managing how to, managing one your centre of mass, but number two is managing to fit everything in in the frame, in the frames that you had in the day. And manufacturing techniques have changed with welding and welding castings to extrusions and stuff like that with frames nowadays, stuff like that. CAD has helped you plan out of stuff a lot easier, a bit quicker, you know, um, a bit more refined, a bit more optimised. Um, so yeah, it's basically, uh, an up I'd say it's kind of like an upgraded version of the RD500. Now looking at the pictures, um, there is a few interesting things that we can actually see. So, um, looking at the pictures, you, I'll, I'll point out on the thing. You can see on this picture here, you can see it's pretty much, you can see where the two cranks come out. One there drives the oil pump and one drives the, the, um, the coil. And uh, it looks like they have replace, uh, removable or detachable um, combustion chambers. Now this happens quite a bit, uh, or can happen a bit in uh, scooters and stuff. It's not that common in dirt bikes and other two strokes and what have you. But you can see there there's this thin section uh, all the way around and that could be a machined, a CNC machined combustion chamber so they can mess around with that or if it becomes damaged or whatever you start blowing chunks out of it you can take them out and replace them and keep that casting which is the actual um, the coolant cap side of the head or the cap so to speak so oh where's the bloody rubber again it's got a magnet on it just stick it to the board you dickhead right so basically what it is or what I think it is this is the thing is that it's a, a CNC set cross section like this that's probably got its combustion chamber like that there's some holes in it for obviously bolting it down and then your casting cap can then just sit on top of that with your water jacket in between your spark plug hole with your thread in you kind of get what I mean something like that and this section here and it, like I said this is only a guess but I've seen things like this before um, I haven't I only had so much time to go look into this thing, you know what I mean? Um, so I think that's what that is. Uh, the other thing that as well is you'll see is that it, it has a um, fuel injection system. So you'll see all the uh, little trumpets that are on the throttle bodies. And um, the fuel injection system is actually a double system. So there's actually one injector. So we have our trumpety jobby like this. And then in here you'll have blah blah blah, it'll change shape or whatever, be a bit of a venture or whatnot. And then what you'll have is you'll have your throttle body uh, with your butterfly. I don't know why I've done that, let's just leave it quite simple. You'll have your throttle body like this, and then you'll have a, an attachment point to bolt it on, and then you'll have your reeds here, and it's probably double reeds or what have you. Um, but what you'll see is there's actually uh, a piece like this and there's an injector and then you'll see up here there's also a spray and port injector and what's it look like? yeah they changed it at some point but it has a common rail there and then these ones have a common rail here and on this picture I've got you can see now the common rails are actually separate so there's a common rail there, there's a common rail there and they'll be connected by pipework where the newer one, the, I think it's the newer one, basically has a pipe that does this, that's your common rail that they've bent and it'll basically bend that way like that and I'll put a picture up of that. Uh, why have they done this? I'm guessing it's so when you go from lower RPM to higher RPM that you can actually get the fuel dumped in there as quick as possible um, when you get into high RPM and stuff. What else have we got? There's some other things that I did point out. Yeah, so on the other side you can see the clutch, and it's a dry clutch, it's actually their clutch uh, design. And it's a dry clutch, and you can see from that side of the casing, from that picture, you can actually see you've got one end of the crank, another end of the crank, and then you'll see that the, the clutch casing joins like that. So in there there'll be a gear and then the um, primary primary reduction gear 
that's basically part of your clutch basket. That'll be on the back of there. So you can see on that picture it's the bottom cylinder that is actually directly driving um, the primary reduction and these two will be mated. And these two will be mated in their internal somewhere. You know, you might think, well, there's that little webbing bit sticking out. No, no, it, it internally there'll be gears and, and what have you. Um, what else does it say? It, it says it's £81,000, which is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Um, they're only going to make 99 of them or what have you. And, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's a very, very simple, basic design. Um, there's been, you know, like I say, it's like the RD500. Um, this is why I was, in a sense, reluctant, not reluctant to do this, it's, everyone was going on about, you know, Matt, tell us about this. But number one is, I've never seen it. Number two is, um, there isn't much stuff out there, but basically because it's pretty simple. A lot of it is, um, you know, in the bike itself. You know, the reason why this bike goes like a bat out of hell, it produces a lot of power, don't get me wrong about that. Um, but a lot of the cost associated with this is actually the rest of the bike. Carbon fibre, fucking everywhere. You know, uh, magnesium wheels, stuff like that. God, this shit isn't cheap. You know, if I go through the blurb on this, of um, of all the stuff it's got, the engine will be expensive. Don't get me wrong, but it's still a lot of it's still just CNC aluminium. But you know, it's got um, carbon reeds, which really aren't that expensive. But it's got the uh, you know the ch the titanium exhaust. It's got four titanium exhausts with expansion chambers and what have you. You know that that's expensive. Um, I'm I'm sure the software and stuff and all the rest of it's eh, probably expensive. Aluminium swing arm, you know that's machined. It's just like all in forks, front and back. You know suspension front and back. Uh, magnesium. They do aluminium. It says aluminium or um, magnesium but you know you go for the magnesium ones or what have you you know the bodywork is carbon fiber um, the fuel tank is carbon fiber the panels are carbon fiber you know and these are only one-off limited runs you know they do 99 probably build about 150 there's a lot of testing a lot of have one or two yield issues or what have you but you know it's it's a hundred and you know or 80 81 grand you know, which is what it says here, it's $127,000. And it sounds like a moped. <laughs> it does sound like a moped. It doesn't sound like a crosser so much. It sounds more like a, that's a single. It sounds like a fucking moped. Um, you know, what I'm saying is, it's a fast moped. It's the fastest moped. But it, it sounds like a moped for 81 grand. Which you can't use really. You have to, you know. And the thing is, it's so quick and so on the edge, basically, you know, because it is a race machine. You're fucking shitting yourself to use it. You, you know, you've got to remember, you've got, oh, I fucking had to squirt it around everywhere. But if you just paid 81 grand for it, you know, coming off it will fuck the entire bike. Coming off that bike will just fuck it. You know what I mean? You'll smash them, fucking panels will just fucking turn to dust tank will just turn to dust you know you, you you mark any of it you fucked it and it's just like that's why you know these things are for like Jay Leno the mug who just puts everything in a fucking garage and just walks around and shows cameras it all day that's all he fucking seems to do with it you know it's it's one of them things that it's just yeah is it impressive as an engine oh no you see that's the thing that is a good that is a, I can kind of hear people's uh, comments of like, well, what does Matt actually think about this? Is it an impressive engine? Um, not really, because they haven't done anything remarkably. They've taken an RD500 pretty much, and then they've just slapped it with all the bells and whistles of modern technology. There isn't really anything that's like, wow, that's quite clever. You know what I mean? It pretty much is an RD500 with a 90 degree split, just so they can get uh, more even balance and all the rest of it. That's what they've done as well, I must mention that. So what they've done is they've removed the balancer shaft and the reason, or how they've removed the balancer shaft is by sticking them at 90 degrees out of plane to each other. 
So you take an RD500 and then you give it all the modern technology things, you know, you give it common rail fuel injection, you give it more injectors, you give it a throttle body control, you give it better designed reeds, you give it um, better designed uh, components, I'm sure there's going to be some titanium rods or something in there, something like that, something quite sexy. Um, you know, and then you remove the balancer shaft, holy shit, that's going to make a massive difference just right there. A balancer shaft is a parasitic loss, you know, the amount of, um, you, you, ha you have to accelerate it, every time you accelerate that bike you have to accelerate that balancer shaft, it's as simple as that, and the balancer shaft by definition is quite heavy because it's got to balance out the masses that are unbalanced. Um, so there's the gear drive, so there's all the fucking uh, little bits of friction and the little bits of, you know, heat and resistance and stuff that's their parasitic losses. You've got to accelerate the thing, you know, overcome its inertia and all the rest of it. That's a parasitic loss. But that actually means more. And it's the weight of it generally. But it's the weight of it and this accelerating and, you know, and deaccelerating, slowing it down. Um, if you can just go fucking, there's, there's fucking three kilos, four kilos, chuck that in the bin. If you can just do that, you're on to a winner. You know, Formula One and MotoGP spend hundreds of thousands, millions on, you know, losing a kilo, a fucking kilo. You know what I mean? Two, three kilos. For Formula One, it's more like five. But, you know what I mean? You spend shitloads of money trying to do that. And if you can just get your engine and just go, we don't fucking need that anymore, put that in the bin. You know, that's amazing. You know, um,. Just stuff like, you know, the better optimization of uh, port design, of, you know, with CFD and stuff, the abilities we have now to do something that would take you 10 years back in the 1970s and 1980s and stuff like that, you know, is mind blowing. And you, you give it fuel injection, you give it a dry clutch, you know, you do all these things to get rid. Uh, uh, try and get rid of it as much as you can and then when you get to the bike you have your bike sat there, your RD500 and you've got the M MMX500 and you go well it's like half the weight <laughs> you know we've got rid of um, the frame, oh, I'll just make it out of fucking carbon or whatever make it out of some aluminium, the wheels make them out of fucking magnesium the exhaust make it out of titanium you know the titanium exhaust is probably so light that it's probably negative mass you know what I mean? Um, compared to the fucking horrible exhaust system that the RD500 had, which is you know what they were trying to do at the best at the time. You wouldn't believe what how much weight saving you can get from having a titanium or even an Inconel exhaust system. It's absolutely madness. You know, it's awesome to see that someone's doing something like that. You know what I mean? I don't like the sound of it. It sounds far too much like a fucking moped on a dyno. Um, but you know, the thing will go like shit off a stick. And I like heavier machines, to be quite honest. I think that would scare the fuck out of me just a bit too much because it's so fucking light. You know, it's like um, recently uh, I had to go on someone's fucking push bike and it was two and a half, two and a half kilos and it felt fucking weird. It felt so rigid like it was carbon and it felt like it was going to snap. And he does velodrome competition shit. But, um, you know what I mean? It's just like, uh, yeah, but anyway. It's an awesome bike, Let, let's not get that wrong, the power it produces is good. It, I was just a bit disappointed when I first ever read about it back, you know, was it 2014, something like 2015? When I first ever read about it and saw the pictures of the engine, you know, saw, I'll put it on the screen, saw this picture, and I just thought, <laughs> it's an RD500, you know what I mean? It, the, the, there's, even even the even the RG five hundred was different than the RD five hundred, and that was at the same time. You know what I mean? I was just thought I was just you know don't change a design if it works kind of thing. I get that, but I was just expecting with all the stuff we have nowadays at our disposal, our disposal, all the engineering ability that we have nowadays and the tools and stuff, they would just come out with something just a bit more. You know, and people are going to say, well, it is meant to be a replica and all the rest of it. Well, if it was meant to be a replica, it wouldn't have injection. If it was meant to be a replica, it wouldn't be, be made out of carbon fibre and so on. It would be a replica, not a fucking upgrade. Any road, hope that makes sense. I probably pissed loads of people off because it sounds like I hate the thing. I don't hate the thing. It's just I don't generally like comparing, uh, not doing comparing. I generally don't like talking about race stuff because... 
it is at, at the extreme end and there's you know like I say 99 of them is not really much use to you guys yeah it's a bit of fun just to learn this stuff and what have you but you know and the other thing is as well is I've never touched it I am just reading what you guys can read that's the other thing that I don't like about, about doing stuff like this you know um, on the other hand we, I'm going to do some uh, more e-tech stuff because I found out quite a lot and um, Yes, that, that's actually quite interesting. Like I say, you know, learning about the e-tech stuff. I'm, I've been doing stuff about the actual injector itself. I've been looking into that and all the rest of it because really that's the only thing that the e-tech has, that and the oil system. Um, but anyway, hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.